Ahoy! Hope your day's going well. So I got a few projects in the works, but I figured it might be fun to try something new. Steam ran an event called NextFest, showcasing some upcoming games with developer-publisher live streams and a whole bunch of playable demos. And I thought it would be kinda sweet, as this is a channel showing you cool stuff, to play a couple and give my thoughts. There's no particular criteria I was looking for, just picking things that caught my eye and I'd like to share with you. And if any sound fun, I'll be leaving the Steam links in this video's description if you want to check them out. With that said, let's rock and roll! Starting with... Children of the Sun. Alright, here's your pitch. You play as a woman, carving a path of vengeance through a cult that ruined her life, one bullet at a time. The game has a similar art style of Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes, where it really shines is its gameplay. It's a level-based shooter that has a tactical, puzzle-like approach. Each stage has a number of targets you need to take out, and each time you hit one, you can re-aim to shoot another. Completing a level has a line indicating your trail of carnage and a high score that can be compared with other players. And the game will add some other mechanics on top, like changing a bullet's trajectory mid-air, blowing up cars, and repositioning after hitting two enemy weak points. It's a shooter that encourages you to be intentional with your order of operations, offering a feeling of satisfaction after figuring out a successful route through a level. It's some good fun. Let's move on. Cryptmaster. Your party was once a group of heroes who banished a great evil. Centuries later, you are called back into service by the power of the Cryptmaster. Now you and your undead party must traverse the crypt in this first-person roguelike. But here's the catch. Spelling is power. You'll be typing to perform actions, engage in combat, and even type to discern the loot in a chest, as the Cryptmaster will refuse to tell you and you have to type actions for hints. Like a game of Pictionary, but the performer hates you. Succeeding results in some loot, but failing will discard it. Spelling is the name of the game. As someone who's terrible at it, I actually liked it. It's like playing Facade if it was an RPG, and that's a great concept. The Cryptmaster is also a fun character to have tagging along. He puts up with the shenanigans of a child, and this child is very amused. You know, you really must stop thinking about sex now you're undead. All your relevant parts have fallen off. The book is also pretty sick, with a heavy emphasis on black and white colors. If you like dungeon crawlers with a twist, try it out. Up next... Crow Country. This demo is so cool. Crow Country places you in the low-polygon boots of Special Agent Mara Forrest as she looks into the disappearance of the theme park owner, Edward Crow. This game has a style of the PlayStation 1, like the original Final Fantasy VII with its doll-like overworld models, but with gameplay more aligned with a classic Resident Evil. And while that particular title was a little bit before my time, as someone who's played some of the newer entries, this was dope. Its atmosphere is superb, with great puzzles and a survival horror playstyle I've been really enjoying. While the enemies can be unsettling, in particular, there's a good one near the end that really surprised me. It's what the enemies mean mechanically, where the horror is effective. I also love the sound that plays when characters talk. It's a small thing, but it really gets me into this game and the vibe it's going for. And if you do try this one, be sure to read the tutorials. It took me a bit to realize you can actually turn the camera. Yeah, I'm not the brightest bulb in the batch. Anyways, moving on. Game of Fame and Fortune, Vanity Fair, The Pursuit. Okay, so you might be looking at this and wondering, dude, you can understand Chinese? And the answer is no, not at all. Remember how I mentioned I picked what caught my eye? Well, I saw the trailer for this, and a guy got trapped in a barrel by some others, and then kicked into the sea, and that seemed too crazy to pass up. I beat the demo in about 19 minutes, and it was very entertaining. There is an unexpected joy in controlling a movie, where the language barrier has you unsure of what you're picking, resulting in some really bizarre sequences. For example... So the main character, Lu Yan, just saw his girlfriend abducted in a hotel. He got a text message, and I clicked the option that had him run upstairs. Just before knocking on the door, another pair of choices shows up. I pick, and then the music drops as Lu looks crestfallen as he walks away from the door he ran to moments ago. At the bottom of the stairs, my character opens the phone, then closes the phone. Cut to him outside, drinking some beer, standing on a bridge. Things are looking so bad, he motions to jump off, then his throat hurts and he stops, before looking across the bridge to find a woman doing the same thing. I like her outfit. She motions her leg on the bars, and I get two options as some nice guitar plays in the background. I pick my choice, and then this happens. <laughs> <clears throat> uh. 
Go Yunga. Oops. Let's try that again. I am fascinated by this pose. So Lou pulls her from the ledge and we get to chatting. I have no idea what I'm saying, but it seems to be going well. Okay. Okay. My character must have some Kazuma Kiryu level riz because he ends the conversation by getting her number while intoxicated. Actually, psych, I got her boss's number instead, and then a model shows up? <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I know I enjoyed it. If this was meant to entertain, it has succeeded with flying colors. Up next, the Silk Bulb Test. Oh boy, what a time this one is. The Silk Bulb Test is a game that has you answer questions with buttons, a straightforward premise. But what you soon realize is this game makes the act of engaging with it as terror-inducing as possible. I'm usually pretty good at not being spooked by horror games, but not this one, filling me with such a level of dread it's insane. With just 19 minutes of playtime, I can confidently say this is one of the most terrifying games I've played. There's a clear understanding of what makes something uncanny, and this game performs it magnificently. The idea to have you move the camera away from the projection to pick your answers is a brilliant mechanic that adds to this horror. If you ever wanted to test your mantle with scary media, this is a fine choice and may keep you up at night. And now, for something completely different. Duck Detective, The Secret Salami. This demo is about 15 minutes long and had me chuckling throughout. You play as Eugene McQuacklin on the hunt for a good case after indulging in a forbidden vice. As you find clues, you piece together the answer in a Mad Lib style format to come to a solid deduction. Yes, that's how it's spelled, it is delightful. If you're up for a good laugh, give it a shot. Just wait till you hear McQuacklin's voice. Alright, on to the next one. Eclipsium. This demo was better than I was expecting. At first glance, it looked like a cool retro adventure game that reminded me of Hylix with the FMV hands. While that is true, this demo is a puzzle game with some insanely cool tricks that had me enthralled for the demo. A lot of it can be best experienced firsthand, but I want to share an early example to give a taste of this game's appeal. So I walked deep into a cave, a little too deep and plummeted to my death. My character woke up in the first room of the game, guess this game doesn't save, I first thought, before walking through the door to find I was back where I died. I turned around to find an empty frame of the door I walked through, only to walk through that to have it disappear. It was surreal in the best kind of way. This game is described as trippy on the store page, and I gotta agree. If you enjoy puzzle games that change the virtual world around you, Eclipsium will satisfy that craving. Speaking of craving, how about some fish? Harold Halibut. I actually read about this one thanks to an issue of Lock On Magazine, so seeing it as a playable demo was an easy sell. Picture an adventure game that has been painstakingly crafted using stop motion, set in an underwater planet on a crashed spaceship. You play as a lab assistant named Harold as you learn about the lives of the ship's inhabitants. This game is an experience. If that premise or any tidbit about it sounds good, definitely give it a shot. I played almost an hour so far, and the demo still has more to offer. It's very clear there is a love put into this project, and it shows, from its setting, to the performances, to even its characters like Harold, who seems like a pretty shy but a fine fella you could have a nice conversation with. And that is the final demo. We've come to the end of this video. We saw a bunch of cool stuff today, and if you decide to try any of these out, have a blast. Just a reminder, the links to all these demos I talk about will be in this video's description. This YouTube channel is called Polymacho, and thanks a whole bunch for watching. First time trying a format like this, but I had some fun with it. Hope you did too. Subscribe if you want to see some more cool stuff, drink plenty of water, ideally not salt water, and take care of yourself. I'll see you around.